Welcome to Mexico Unexplained, where we will explore the magic, the mysteries, and the miracles of Mexico. This series presents information based partly on theory and conjecture. The podcaster's purpose is to suggest some possible explanation, but not necessarily the only ones to the subjects we will examine. Here is your host, Robert Bito. Welcome, and muy bienvenidos to episode number 188 of Mexico Unexplained where we examine the magic, the mysteries, and the miracles of Mexico. I'm your host, Robert Pitto. The Aztec Empire was a living and breathing political entity dominating central Mexico when Europeans first encountered it in 1519. Cortes and his band of Spanish conquistadors entered the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan as invited guests of the Emperor Montezuma. They stayed in the capital for many months before things went south. This gave the Spanish much time to observe and document what they saw. These first-hand accounts are valuable to us today as we try to understand daily life among the Aztecs. Even after the conquest, Spanish clerics and scholars raced to document elements of a fading Aztec culture. As the Europeans, and specifically the church, were interested in converting the massive population of natives to Christianity, they realized that they needed at least more than a basic understanding of the ancient Mexican religious beliefs and associated stories. Among these beliefs lurk many strange creatures and spirits and combinations of the two. Mexico Unexplained has explored some of these so-called monsters in previous shows, and even a book. Links to shows about the more famous lake monsters, shape-shifting creatures, and other bizarre animals are in the description. There are some other monsters that are not so well known, with very little information about them surviving to the present day. Here are five of them. Number 1. Oshkokoltsek in 1615, a Franciscan friar, Juan de Torquemada, published a book in Spain titled Monarquia Indiana, or in English, Indian Monarchy. The book was a monumental work chronicling the cultures and histories of many indigenous groups in New Spain. Torquemada was brought to New Spain from Spain as a child sometime in the 1560s and growing up in colonial Mexico, he had interactions with natives who had experienced life before the conquest. As Torquemada began ministering to the native peoples, he gathered stories of their religion and folklore. In his Indian Monarchy book, the friar mentions a curious monster that terrorized the pre-Aztec peoples in central Mexico and was feared for many decades after the Spanish took over. The Oshkokoltsek first appeared among the Toltecs during a festival. Many hundreds of people were dancing, and then this terrible creature suddenly materialized out of thin air. He stood about ten feet tall and was big and stocky, much like what we would have in our minds as the stereotypical caveman. He had a big forehead, long arms, and wore a loincloth around his midsection. When the Oshkokoltsek appeared and saw the dancers, he smiled a big smile and decided to join in on the festivities. He danced with the Toltecs and enjoyed himself, but because he was big and clumsy, his dancing turned into a horrible scene. Unknowingly, the giant seriously injured and even killed some people while swirling around. So as not to anger this creature, the officials in charge of the ceremonies continued with the music and dance until the great Oshkokoltsek had his fill of mirth and decided to disappear. The poor Toltecs were left with dozens of people dead. The scene allegedly occurred many times throughout history, and from the time of the Toltecs to just a few generations before Juan de Torquemada wrote his book, some folklorists and researchers on the more esoteric side have theorized that the happy, simple giant was a thought form or tulpa created by the revelers themselves or was manifested through a combination of music, dancing, and singing that somehow brought the creature into this reality. There have been no reports of sighting of the Oshkokoltsek in modern times. Number 2. Tlashkeneshkimili 
Sometimes a thick fog would form over Lake Texcoco, the body of water that completely surrounded the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan. When the city was engulfed in this thick fog, the residents stayed inside their homes for fear of an apparition called the Tlaxcaneshkimili. This monster was described in early Spanish accounts as a ghost. It sometimes had no legs and dragged itself through the imperial capital by its strong forearms. Some reports say that its head was a small human skull, almost like a shrunken head, with sharp teeth. A drawing from Spanish colonial times made a few decades after the conquest shows just the Tlaxcaneshkimili's torso, with a neck surrounded with feathers and skinny arms with claws. A simple skull serves as its head. According to the legend, the creature would moan like a sick man and its cries could be heard for many miles. Some believed that the Tlaxcaneshkimili was a creation of the god Tezcatlipoca, the smoking mirror god, the ruler of the night sky and keeper of the ancestral memories, the eternal rival of the great god Quetzalcoatl. Tezcatlipoca sent the Tlacanesh Kimili to earth to remind humans of their mortality. In the old chronicles, even Emperor Montezuma was afraid of this ghost-like creature. According to tradition, whenever anyone heard the sick cries of this evil phantom, old soldiers would be the only ones allowed to confront it, usually before it got a chance to get to the heart of the city. The old soldiers would try to talk to the Tlaxcanesh Kimili and reason with it. The creature would offer the soldiers things they would not want, such as a fist full of cactus spines, and the rejection of its generosity would usually cause the Tlaxcanesh Kimili to retreat, discouraged and sad. While not as menacing as many of the other supernatural creatures of the Aztec, the Tlaxcanesh Kimili usually was a bad omen and came right before a war or plague. Number 3. Yualtepusli. This creature lived in the dense forests and could be found throughout the Aztec Empire. It was humanoid and slightly larger than the average man. He was headless, and in some accounts he was known to carry his head around by the hair. People went to the forest to search for the Yoaltepuzli, because according to legend, if you were brave enough to seek him out and meet with him, he would consider granting you wishes. Many would try to commune with this creature to try to obtain money or a military victory. The headless Yoaltepuzli would make a loud cracking sound, like a tree falling in the forest. From this sound came the creature's nickname, the Night Axe. The sound came from the Ualtepuzli opening up his chest when he sensed humans nearby. Like the Tlacanishkimili, this Aztec monster would offer humans it encountered cactus thorns. If he sensed great bravery among his human visitor, he would give that person more thorns. If the Ualtepuzli was in a bad mood or didn't wish to be disturbed by humans, Sometimes he would strike down his visitors and curse them with poverty and misery. In one tale, a Spanish chronicler stated that if a human visitor could tear out the heart of the Yualtepuzli from its already open torso, then this led to a whole other series of fortunes and misfortunes. If you could keep the creature away from its heart for one day, the lucky or unlucky human would get to see the heart transform itself. If the heart turned into a ball of feathers the next day, the human would be prosperous and lucky throughout his life. If the heart turned into a black blob, the human would be forever cursed. Number 4. Ishpushteki The Spanish considered the Ishpushteki a horrible demon and possibly a manifestation of Satan himself. He was humanoid, tall and lean but muscular, with bird legs that went up to his knees. He carried a long staff to lean on. That staff usually had a human skull or two attached to it for ornamentation. Sometimes Ishpushteki was described as having long and sharp claws and no lower jaw. To the Aztecs he hailed from Mictlan, the underworld where souls travel to after death and was considered a lord there. 
He was married to a minor Aztec deity called Neshoshcho, who is the goddess of fear. Neshoshcho's brother, the brother-in-law of Ishbushteki, was Shoaltentli, the god of sleep disorders and mental illnesses. While in Mictlan, Ishbushteki kept the interesting company of his extended family, but sometimes he became restless. While his wife, the beautiful fear goddess, never left the underworld, occasionally Ishbushteki would come to the surface of the earth and would randomly curse humans, especially night travelers. He would stalk the long-distance trade routes of the Aztec Empire looking for his prey, and would occasionally frequent the streets and alleyways of some of the major cities of ancient Mexico, such as Tenochtitlan, Tlacopan, and Texcoco. Unlike other Aztec monsters, one could not reason with the Ishpushteki. If you saw him, it meant certain doom and maybe even death, and there was no possibility to negotiate with him. Number 5. Xicalcoatl The name of this creature in the Aztec language literally means chocolate cup snake. After the conquest, the name was Hispanicized to Xicalcoate, and for many years it was believed to be a real animal, but unclassified, also known as a cryptid. The Xicalcoatl was a large water snake that inhabited Lake Texcoco and the surrounding waterways. It was primarily black in color with a variety of tones, mostly pale green and yellow, on its underbelly. This unusual snake got its name from the strange shape that grew out of its back when it reached maturity. The growth was said to resemble a chocolate cup or some other small ceramic vessel. In some legends, this protrusion was often decorated like a piece of pottery. The Xicalcoatl would use this growth on its back as a sort of decoy. It would go to the shallow areas of the water in places where it knew humans would frequent. The snake would then submerge itself, so the strange pottery-looking shape on its back was exposed to the surface. Humans would see that chocolate cup and wade out into the water to try to take it away. As the human drew closer, the snake would move away more to try to get the unsuspecting person into deeper water. When the Xicalcoatl had lured the human to a distance sufficiently far from the shore, it would churn the water and cause the human to drown. The human would never be heard from again. While this version of the story of the Xicalcoatl comes directly from the writings of a Spanish colonist a few years after the conquest, a similar urban legend exists in Mexico today, which may have direct ties centuries back to the original legend of Xicalcoatl. In the modern story, an evil fairy leaves little chocolate cups in the water to tempt unsuspecting children. As with the gigantic snake story, the cups serve as decoys to get the children into the water in order to drown them. Some wonder if the story of Xicalcoatl could be based on the existence of a real creature, a possibly now extinct water snake that only lived in Lake Texcoco before it was drained by Spanish civil engineers acting under royal authority. With the draining of the lake and the expansion of Mexico City into its territory, perhaps this strange water snake really did exist and died off from loss of habitat. Although no physical remains have yet been found, the possibility that the Xicalcoatl was once a real creature is still on the table for some cryptozoologists, those who investigate and seek to identify legendary animals. Thank you once again for listening to another episode of Mexico Unexplained. Remember to like and subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on Twitter. Tell your friends by sharing these shows with others. Please go to our website, MexicoUnexplained.com, for references, illustrations, and for free access to transcripts of past shows. Please visit Amazon.com to purchase the books, Mexico Unexplained and Mexican Monsters, to get hard copies of The Magic, The Mysteries, and The Miracles of Mexico. We appreciate your kind attention once again. Until next time, Thank you and gracias. 
Thank you for listening to another episode of Mexico Unexplained with host Robert Bitto. For show summary, relevant links and commentary, please check out our website at mexicounexplained.com. Like us on Facebook and be a part of the conversation. Adios and hasta la vista.